one of the things you've got there is you have a bunch of eagles sort of rolled up in towels. Uh, that's true, I do. Yeah. Um, we had caught, we, we were banding eagles in those days and, right and putting mark, uh, leg bands on them and hoping to follow them again. But it's, it was a different era. It, uh, several of the eagles, we actually put line of sight transmission, a, a little antenna on their back, but you had to read this antenna by seeing it, be, being in direct had, line with you it. You had to see where the eagle was. To yes, to read it. or with, maybe a mile or two away. It wasn't going to the satellite. It was No, it was going it. straight line of sight. Well, on, on the West Coast, as you know, we have a lot of islands, mountains, inlets. And, and so Hills. never after the day of banding and releasing a bird, I could follow where it went, but never from that day onward did I ever find one of those eagles again. It was a very expensive adventure. Nowadays, nowadays, you put a little marker on the eagle, it sends a satellite, an image up to the satellite or a signal, and then you get to back, read this back wherever you are. So that eagle is now trackable anywhere in the world. Now the technology in my day was $300 for every one we banded. Now it's about $6,000, about $10,000 for reading the data coming back from, fr from the satellite. So it's not cheap, you know but you get more information. Do? Do you see this glass that I put the water on the table? I think this plastic glass has a leak in it. It does. <laughs> and it's about to leak all over my camera, or my computer there. Yeah, so. so I think we'll, I think we'll, this is a very informal television program. I, everything about you, David, in, in the 40 years that you and I have traveled the north and various places in pursuit of, of eagles or grouse or ptarmigan or, or whatever we happiness. were. Happiness. It, it was, yes, it was informal. informal. Happiness. Happiness, happiness yes. yes. Well, we've nearly gone off cliffs. We've gone across mountain streams. We've driven to Inuvik. We've driven in the back of those funny mountains up there. We've had to walk out several kilometers. I've walked out several kilometers when I got us stuck on top of Vailmont. I'm glad there. you added that you got his stuck on the mountain because it certainly wasn't me that got no, stuck. No, you didn't get no. stuck. I was no, I, 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 I was I, just clarifying that. Yes, just clarifying. I was off uh, doing uh, David things. Yeah, and uh, you were off doing your thing, and uh, that time it was putting bands on little ptarmigans and stuff. That's right. But you've gone from being the guy with, I mean, and, and there's stories about you in that tailor craft, that little airplane flying yes. around like on and an angle like this. I don't know, does my hand show like this at all? You're sort of flying no, around. No, because it's showing me. But okay, <laughs> you're fly, flying around sideways up with the wings. This is a wing up and a wing down. So that you can see into the eagle's nest. Right. It was relatively easy with a small plane, whether it was the Taylor Craft or my pacer that I had later on float. It was relatively easy to do tight turns around an eagle's nest and count the number of young chicks or whatever was in the nest. A, a kind of interesting story. We had great difficulty counting eggs. And not because we couldn't see the eggs if they were there. It's just that mother always so sat tight on the egg. She sat on top. If there's eggs there, she never wants to leave them exposed because A, they get cold, but B, a, a raven or oh, a crow oh could come, come in. Them, yeah. So uh, in us circling around, it was one of the little first dilemmas we faced in our population study back in the 60s. You start off wanting to know the, both the geographic distribution of eagles and how many nests are going to be productive in X numbers of square miles, but you start with population data wanting to know how many eggs they lay and then how many they hatch and how many they raise. The latter part was easy to determine because we could see the bigger chicks in the nest, but we couldn't see the eggs. How many eggs were laid. How many eggs were laid. So uh, no matter how, what I did with my little fixed wing, the eagles don't care about fixed wing aircraft. They, they are not disturbed by airplane. You can be within 30, 40 feet of them and they don't care. They may scowl at you. They may even call but they don't get out of the road. They don't care. But they didn't like helicopters. And so we finally learned that we could do a count of eagle nests by approaching slowly. The eagle would stand up, and then there was that moment of aha. You could we, see a count She eggs. stood up, ah, you got two eggs, and April the 12th. And, and then we go on to the next nest. So we, it didn't really involve disturbing them, but it was employing the right was, technology for the right circumstances. Well, whenever I hear a helicopter over, overhead, I always go out in the balcony and take a look to see where it is. There you go. Helicopters have a different noise. They you, do you, have you, a, you, a different intensity, are, and, yeah. and eagles didn't like helicopters, um, but they don't seem to sort of give like a Sort of like the dark. difference between a blonde and a brunette. Well, that's your statement. That's not mine. That's, there's no science there, David. Oh, okay. That's, well, I thought no there was. It just no, no. seemed to be a fine. So, Richard I mean, smiled. Ri <laughs> 
I'm not sure what we were going to talk about today. Well, you, we I'm, talking... I'm, I'm a fill-in. I know that. I'm no, a no, fill-in no, for no, somebody. No, no, you're not and, a fill-in. So... <laughs> well, I was going to have somebody on at this particular time, but I forgot about him. And he did show up. But since you and I had both announced that you were going to be on at 6 o'clock, Kenji Okuda is coming back next week. There you go. And Kenji well, Okuda is just an amazing man. I'm just going to make a point because... Uh, he was the fellow. He was uh, born in North America, Japanese student, student at West at University of Seattle, Seattle, Washington. And when Pearl Harbor came on, he was one of the people evacuated. And he got evacuated into the camp, and then he got sent to Oberlin College, where he became the college president, the <laughs> student president <laughs> wow. of yes. the college. And then the United States military took him away from the college because he was such so erudite and well spoken and so on, and they made him a traveling representative of the Nisai, the Japanese born in North America, who had been interned. And this last summer, he was given a, a special award by Washington, Seattle, Washington uh, University for having all this happen 50 years or 60 years ago. Anyway, small thing, but he's going to be on next week. Mar, he, he sounds like a so individual. many. Uh, of, of those early Japanese, they have made an incredible contribution. We just published another book about the same topic, but another family here in North Vancouver. So, well, um, and of I, course, I, and David Suzuki, remember, yeah, he was absolutely. rounded up in Vancouver, twelve years old, stuck in a cattle yeah. barn in the PNE. Anyway, that was what we're, yeah. we were going and to. And they talk made about. an incredible contribution to our society. And oh. um, so. Kenji was an economics professor at Simon Fraser University. Anyway, he's eighty-six years old now, so we got to talk to him before he goes so long. Anyway, making a long story short. We're talking about your eagles, and you're not just a fill-in because you were going to be on at 8 <laughs> o'clock, and uh, we got our times mixed up. Um, and uh, we've done so many things together that the story of your eagles just continues. Because, for instance, when you and I showed up in Skagway one time in Haines, Alaska, we went into the little gift store, and I picked out some postcards to send home, and you sort of grabbed this postcard out and said, that's my eagle. <laughs> and sure enough, there it was. We had, I should go find one. I got one around here. There's a, the postcards being sold in this little store to tourists in Alaska were by David Allen. Yes, David Allen. Hancock, but we left, they they left, left, the, they Hancock left the Hancock off. off but they gave David Allen credit, yeah, yeah. but that was your, yeah, your that's, eagle. That's funny. And that, that was a, a postcard. That when I was a grad student, I mean, a funny little story. When I was a grad student, you, you, you're beholden to your department, obviously. And I, Mr. Blodell from Macmillan and oh, Blodell. Oh, Blodell, yes. yes. Oh, uh, I, 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 he, he, of course, funded a lot of the things at UBC. And he had asked my professor, Dr. Ian McTaggart Cowan at the time, if, if somebody could provide a photo for his Christmas card. So I gave him a copy of my eagle. Well, it turns out, I mean, I don't know whether Mr. Bladell had to make some extra money, but he ended up selling my postcard to, to the commercial people who then sold my postcard to, and, and the poor starving graduates who never got a cent out of it in those days. Well, <laughs> I I was, thought, but it was cool, wasn't it? Well, it was, I, you you know, even had a smile on your face when you saw it well, because sure. it was, what do you do? Eh? These are not things that I... I've and learned I, to worry about over life. And I life. just want the audience to recognize how deeply you are that in Alaska, the eagle is the state bird. It isn't, actually. It's the ptarmigan. It's is the it the ptarmigan? Yes. But it, actually, I realized that if, if you went in close on, on my jacket, this is the American Bald Eagle Foundation emblem because I'm a director on the yes. American Bald Eagle Foundation, which actually is housed in Haines, Alaska now. And that's where we have our big museum and we have our big annual festival. I mean, there's a number of eagle festivals in North America, but the one in Haines is one of the most spectacular because we get about three, 4,000 eagles on the Chilkat River every year yeah. in November. But we have marvelous eagle festivals here. Brackendale, most famous. Yes. Um, it had the lowest count last year because they had a, a tragedy beset their river. One of the CNN trains yes. dumped killed a whole bunch fish. of toxic cars and killed the fish run. But that's not the end of that story. S many, several of the rivers along the southern British Columbia coast had no salmon runs this year, or, or no or minimal. Fortunately, the other festival, which I'm, no, I'm not shirt. wearing their shirt, um, but the, the no, Fraser Valley Bald Fraser Eagle Festival, yes. which has our festival in, on the Chilkat Harrison, we had a record number of eagles. We had over 2,500 eagles in a square mile. I mean, uh, I've, I've dealt with, you know, the...